This segment of the news is brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. News 46 caught up with members of the Civil Air Patrol over the weekend who attended the EAA Young Eagles event at the Calvada Aero Park. Uh, Civil Air Patrol is doing very well. We've grown since we started and we're still picking up people here and there. We're taking every opportunity we can to recruit. Has this been the first time that you've flown in this type of aircraft? Uh, actually, no. Civil Air Patrol features what's called O-Rides or orientation flights where we actually, as cadets, get to fly in Cessnas with licensed Civil Air Patrol pilots. Awesome. So you guys are taking on drones now, I hear. Oh, yes. We've been working on drones for, I want to say, a couple months now. Yeah. How's that going? Oh, it's going great. We've got a bunch of, most of our cadets are actually certified in certain drone techniques and things like that. Fantastic. So, are you doing that now? Uh, yes, I am. I'm actually doing the same thing as the rest of them. So, so how's it going with you personally? Let's find out about Dylan. Uh, I just recently enlisted in the Air Force. I'll be leaving in January, yeah. January, February. Or so say goodbye to you for a while? Uh, yeah, for a little bit, I guess. I'll be leaving in not too long. I um, recently joined Civil Air Patrol in June. Um, great program, um, and it's really fun. You like it? I do, yes. Um, we do all sorts of things, um, including O-rides, uh, orientation rides, mm -hmm. and, um, like, uh, ground... Um, uh, search and rescue. Yeah. So what are you hoping to do? Are you going to become a pilot? Um, yes, I'm hoping to uh, join the Air Force and become a pilot there. And yeah. Oh, we're doing all right. We got about 25 members. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started, we had four or five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come a long ways. Are you taking members right now? Oh, yes, anytime. Are you still having your meetings there at Best Western? Uh, no, uh, we, well, we occasionally have them there. They uh -huh. have been gracious enough to allow us to uh, go there at mm -hmm. times, but sometimes we go to the senior center mm -hmm. because there's a big parking lot there for drill yeah. and uh, nobody is around basically. Yeah. And we've gotten into drones yeah. and now we don't have to worry about hitting anybody's car. We meet at any of them uh, depending on availability. So if uh, students or adults want to find out more about uh, the Civil Air Patrol, can they contact you? Oh yes, uh, email is uh, rumriver1290 at yahoo.com or my phone is 520-280 two five seven three the family assistance center set up at the las vegas convention center to meet the immediate needs of victims family members and those affected by the one october harvest festival shooting will transition into a new model of service in the upcoming days to support the long-term needs of people coping with the incident Starting Monday, October 23rd, the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center, located at the Lyde Ambulatory Care Center at 1524 Pinto Lane in Las Vegas, near Martin Luther King Boulevard, will begin serving as a resource and referral center for victims, survivors, and people affected by 1 October. Anyone interested in accessing services should call 702-455-AID. That's 702-455-2433 for information or to schedule appointments. Services to be provided at the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center include victim advocacy and support, counseling and spiritual care, referrals, legal and documentation replacement referrals, transportation help, and technical assistance, assessing online resources, including FBI victim assistance services. Initial operational hours will be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. The Nevada Department of Transportation will continue pilot car operations along Highway 160 between Betty Avenue and Leslie Streets in Pahrump through November 3rd from 6 a.m. till 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. A second pilot car operation will take place near Johnny Curve during October 23rd through the 27th from 6 a.m. until 5 p.m. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Tapping our news, an arrest connected to the California wildfires has been made, and officials say the fires may have been sparked by an arsonist. 
Shares of California utility company PG&E had been under pressure over concerns the utility could be held liable for its power lines potentially sparking the flames. The shares rallied in relief on Tuesday that an arrest was made. But the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office confirmed to CNBC the investigation into the fires is still happening. Amazon Studio Chief Roy Price is hanging it up. Price resigned following allegations of harassment. Price was placed on leave last Thursday. NAFTA negotiations are likely to go into next year. Officials involved say the fourth round of talks, including American, Canadian and Mexican officials, have significant conceptual gaps. Thanks, Angela. There is an update on that arson arrest story. According to the Sonoma County Sheriff, there is no evidence that the arrest was made on Sunday was linked in any way to those wildfires. The man named Jesus Gonzalez was taken into custody and charged with arson for a small fire he had started to warm himself up. He had a lighter and a fire extinguisher on his person, according to police, and is very well known by law enforcement in that community as being a homeless individual. Police say the arrest is unrelated to to the Napa and Sonoma County fires that broke out on October 8th, killing dozens of people and destroying thousands of homes. Police are investigating the cause of the blaze, which still includes a possible link to utility company PG&E and faulty power lines. PG&E have liability insurance up to $800 million. The cost of the fire damage at this time is about $6 billion. News 46 will return right after this.